let's talk Lamar writ large hitting send just as John Harbaugh sits down to talk to the media yeah. on a tweet yeah. saying I by the way asked for a trade on March 2nd and then the uh, annual meeting wraps up as he tweets about how he wasn't jaking his injury if he was then why was he trying so hard between weeks one and 12 um, and he's he's putting it out there he's putting a lot of messages out there yep. um, and part of the subtext for me Albert is that um, if he had uh, offer sheets on the table or in an offer sheet on the table he wouldn't be doing that does he have an offer sheet from anybody do you think no and I, and I think like my feeling right now is if an offer sheet was going to come before the draft it would have come by now um so like i i mean we could start with like that that first piece which is um you know what i thought was like a pretty strate- strategic savvy way of going about that um i mean we assume it was intentional it could have been an accident it couldn't have been an accident that 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 he has tweet um his send on that tweet you know like whatever it was three minutes into john harbaugh's media session i i think part of that might be a salvo with the way the general public has seen this like i think because he doesn't have an agent like people are looking at it and saying well like is this guy just wandering around aimlessly no idea what he's doing um, this was kind of like, all right, well, you know, if you want to see if I can be cold and cunning and smart and savvy about this, watch what I'm about to do. And he did that. So, like, I think that that's part of it, you know. Um, and then just as far as where this thing goes, the reason I bring up the draft, Rich, is because I think that there could be teams in the top ten, a team or teams in the top ten, that might not be wild about this quarterback class, right, and might think to themselves, if Young and Stroud go one and two, I, we really don't feel comfortable taking one of the guys that's left, um, you know, at three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10. So why don't we wait until after the draft to see what we're going to do? And maybe we make a run at Lamar Jackson and then spend our top 10 pick on a Will Anderson or a Tyree Wilson or a Jalen Carter or whoever else. Right. And then when we get past the draft, instead of having to potentially sacrifice the fourth pick or the seventh pick or the 10th pick for Lamar Jackson. Now we're talking about picks in 24 and 25. And we believe that our pick is going to be say in the mid twenties with Lamar Jackson as our quarterback. So I think for some of these teams getting past the draft and then not having to give up one of this year's picks could change the dynamic. As for where things stand with the Ravens, I think the problem right now is, um, you know, I think because Lamar's waited five years, he wants to win on every front. And, like, I respect him wanting to do that. Like, generally, it's tough to get an NFL team to agree to that. So, he, you want to win on term, you want to win on guarantees, you want to win on the money. Like, he, he wants to win on every front. And right now, the Ra- at this point, the Ravens haven't been willing to go the distance on that. I do think, like, that there's a compromise here in some sort of three-year fully guaranteed deal. Um, But I think it's going to take some compromise on Lamar's part to get there. And I will say that Lamar, I think right now, is standing on principle. I don't think this has anything to do with greed. So I think it's pretty unpredictable how he's going to handle the rest of this and whether or not he'll really want to seek a middle ground with with the Ravens and where they're at. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.